In this lecture, we are going to work on showing all the existing chats of the current user with other users. If you remember, a chat is basically a connection between two users. And to start a chat, we are storing the user ID of the two users between whom the chat is going on. So currently I am in Mongoose. Here, if we go to this chats collection, there you will notice that for each chat in the members array, we are storing the user ID of the users between whom the chat is going on. Okay. So for example, if I want to get a chat which has started between John and other users, I can use John's user ID and using this user ID, I can search in which members array of the chat object that user ID is present. So whichever chat document will be returned, that will be the chat between John and other users. So now what we want is in the UI, we want to work on the functionality where we will display the chats between a given user, let's say John and other users. So for that, let's go to VS code. In here, let's go to API calls and there we are going to create a new file and I'm going to call it as chat.js. And from within this file, we are going to make API calls to our chat APIs. So again here, we are going to create a function and we are going to export it. Let's call this function get all chats. Here I'm going to use arrow function syntax and this function, it is going to run asynchronously. So let's use this as keyword here. Within this, let's go ahead and let's add a try catch block. From the catch block, let's simply go ahead and let's return the error if any error occurs and here it should be const and not function. Okay. And in the try block, let's write the logic for making an API call to our get all chats API for that here, we need an Exios instance. So let's go ahead and let's first import that Exios instance. So that Exios instance, we have created it inside this index.js file. Okay. Now we are going to use this Exios instance. So here, let's say Exios instance dot, and we are going to make a get request because to get all the chats, we are handling a get request in the API. So from here, we are going to make a get request and there let's specify the endpoint for get all chats API. And for that, I'll go to Postman. There we have this get all chats request from there. I'll copy that endpoint, which is API slash chat slash get all chats. Let's go ahead and let's specify it here. And this here is going to run asynchronously. So I'm going to use await keyword because we want to wait for the response and whatever response we will receive, let's go ahead and let's assign it to a variable and let's call it response. And then from this response, we want to get the actual response data, the chat array, which we are sending in the response for that from here, we are going to return response dot data. Okay. If I go to our backend code and there, if I go to chat controller, there we have this get all chats API. So if you see from here, we are returning this object in the response and in there we have this data property, which is storing an array of all the chats. All right. So this function is complete. Let's save it. Next, in order to store this all chats data in our state management, basically in this user slice, we are going to create one more state here. So since our state list is increasing, let me move it to separate lines in order to make it more readable. And here we are going to create one more state and I'm going to call it as all chats. And initially it is going to be an empty array. Then here we are going to create a state updating function. We are going to call it as set all chats. And again to this, we are going to sign a function which is going to receive the state and action. And what do we want to do here is we want to set all chats to the payload, which we are going to receive for the action. Okay. And finally, from here, let's also export this all chats. So now we should be able to access this all chats anywhere where 
we are importing this reducer let me save the changes in this file now here we have created this function to make an api call to get all the chats now from where we are going to call this function again what we want is when the home page is loaded at that time we are already fetching the details of the logged in user we are also fetching the details of all the users and now we also want to fetch all the chats for the currently logged in user and again we are going to do that from the protected route so let me close this folder let's go to components and there let's go to this protected route.js there we have created this get all user from db in the same way i am going to create another function let's call it get current user chats to this we are going to assign a function and this function is also going to run asynchronously in here let's write a try catch block in the catch block if there is any error that has occurred while fetching the current user chat in that case we simply want to navigate the user to login page okay otherwise what we are going to do is we are going to make a call to the function which we have created and here let's create this variable called response i'm going to use the await keyword and we want to use this get all chats function so let's call get all chats and in order to use this get all chats we also need to import it from chat.js file now if the response is successful so here we will check if response.success in that case what do we want to do is we want to set this all chats with the response data which we have received with the response so in the response data we are going to have an array of all the chats so we want to update this all chat state with those chats initially it is an empty array but once we will update it with the response data it is going to contain all the chats from the database so for that here we are going to use the dispatch function we are already creating this dispatch here okay if you have not created it then you need to create it using this use dispatch and to use this use dispatch you also need to import it so here we are importing this use dispatch from react redux all right and to this dispatch we are going to call this set all chat function this is our state updating function which we are going to use for updating this all chat state so i'm going to copy this function let's call it in here and there let's pass the payload and the payload will be response dot data because this response dot data is what is going to contain our all chats array so again if i go back to our backend code there we are storing this all chats in this data property of the response so here we are reading this data property where we have all our chats and we are updating our all chat state with that data now again in order to use this set all chats we also need to import it from user slice okay now with this let's quickly check if an api request is getting sent to this get all chats api or not so let's go to our application let's try to go to the home page so there is some error basically the jwt has expired so let me go ahead and let me log john and let's use the password for john and the user is logged in okay if i search for a user here it is also searching for the user now let me open developer console okay and let's go to network tab and let's make a request again and you will see a request to get logged user has been sent a request to get all users has been sent but a request to get all chats that api has not been sent that's because we also need to call this get all chats function we have not called it anywhere so let's go ahead and let's call it from within this use effect let's save the changes again let's go back to our application let me clear everything let's refresh the page and now you can see a request to get all chats is also sent 
and in the get all chats we should get all the chats of john because currently logged in user is john so we should get all the chats from john so john has started two chats or three chats so all those three chats are here so there we should have same id of john as you can see all these three contains the john's user id all right so till here everything is working as expected let's go back to our vs code and there let's go to this user list component and there currently we have this all user state let's also go ahead and let's use all chat state okay so this is also we are going to import from user reducer now the next thing is currently if i search for a user let's say mary john has already started a chat with mary so since there is already a chat existing between john and mary in that case we don't want to show this start chat button so for this user with whom a chat is already started we don't want to show this button so let's go ahead and let's hide this button for all those users with whom the currently logged in user has already started a chat let's go to vs code and there we have a start chat button so here we have this start chat button now what we are going to do is we are going to wrap it within curly braces because here now we are going to write some javascript expression so let me move it to a separate line okay and here we are going to check a condition so what we are going to do is on the all chats we are going to find so for each chat we are going to check if that chat so every chat is going to have a members array right which is going to store the user id of the members of that chat so if that members array includes the id of the current user now this current user is not the logged in user so for example if i want to check if john has started a chat with mary or not from the all chats we are going to loop over this chat using this find method and for each iteration we are going to get a chat object in that chat object we are going to check if that chat object's members array contains the current user id so for example if i want to check if john has already started a chat with mary or not in that case for each chat i am going to check if the members array of that chat contains the mary's user id if it contains mary's user id that means the chat is already started between john and mary in that case i don't want to display the start chat button but if that chat object does not contain the user id of the mary that means chat is not started between john and mary so in that case for mary we want to show the start chat button i hope this is clear so here we are going to pass the id of the searched user right for example let's say we have searched for mary in that case here we are going to pass the id of mary and where are we going to get the id of mary well if you see here when we are using this map function we are looping over each user and for each iteration we are going to get the user object of that user in this user variable so here we are going to pass user dot underscore id okay so if the chat does not contain the user id of that object in the members array then only we want to display this start button if the members array contains the user id of that user then we don't want to show this start button and here it should be class name okay so this is the condition we are going to check if this condition returns true then only we want to display this button but if this condition returns false then we don't want to display this div this button let me save the changes let's go back to our application and now you will see that for mary that start chat button is not being displayed but if we search for some other user for example steve smith john has not started a chat with steve so in that case it is showing that start chat button but if i simply type m then john has already started a chat with mark and jane so it is not showing that start chat button but with steve and steve smith the chat is not started so there it is showing that start chat button finally john has already started a chat with 
Mark and Mary. So we also want to display these two users in the sidebar. Currently, it is not being displayed if I don't search anything, right? So let's go ahead and let's implement that as well. Let's go back to VS Code. And here, where we are filtering for the user, there we are checking for a condition. So we are checking if this search key is not empty. In that case, it is going to filter all the users from the all users list and it is going to display all those users, right? So let's wrap it within parenthesis. So this will be one condition. And to make it more readable, let me go ahead and let me put it in separate lines. Okay. So this is one condition. This is for filtering the user. Now, when we are not filtering the user, at that time we want to display all the users with whom the current user has already started a chat. So for that, we are going to write this OR operator here. So whichever of these two will return true, that will be displayed. Okay, and here we are going to write from all chats, we want to find some chats, okay? And this sum method, it is also going to loop over each element of this all chats. And for each iteration, let's say, we are going to assign that chat object to this chat variable. And here we will check if that chat member, so each chat object is going to have this members array. If it includes the current user ID, so for that, again, here we have the user object. We are going to use that user object. And on that, we are going to access the underscore ID property. So we are looping over each chat using this sum method. And for each iteration, we are checking if that chat's members array contains the user ID. So basically, this members array is going to store the user ID of the current user, the currently logged in user. Let's say John is the currently logged in user. So this members array is going to store the user ID of John and it is also going to store the user ID of the other user with whom John has already started a chat. So if this members array contains that user ID, then we want to display that user in the sidebar. If I save the changes now, and if we go to our application, you will see that those users with whom the chat is already started, that is being displayed here. And here we don't see the start chat button. So this is working as expected. So these are the two users with whom John has already started a chat, but we can also search for other users. For example, Steve, in that case, it is also going to show those users whose name contains this search string in it. Okay. And there we will also see this start chat button. When we will click on this start chat button, it is going to start a new chat between the currently logged in user and that user for whom we have clicked on this start chat button. And once the chat will be started, again, this start chat button will not be displayed. So in the next lecture, we are going to implement the start chat functionality. But in this lecture, now we are able to show all the users with whom the current user has already started the chat. This is all from this lecture. I'll see you in the next lecture.